Okay, gang, let's do one reaction in this video. Let's keep chugging along. So, if some of you were thinking in that last video, hmm, if we can do an anti-addition of water to a double bond, aka put an alcohol on that least substituted carbon, could we do the same for a halogen or something like that? Well, for those of you who are thinking that, you guys were definitely on something. And namely, we can do this with one halogen, one binary acid. In this video, we're going to cover how to do an anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr. And by anti-Markovnikov addition, right, we're just meaning put something on a double bond in the least substituted carbon position. Okay, so let me just throw up an example here for you guys. And unfortunately, this is a mechanism you guys definitely, at least at Pitt, you guys should know this because I remember grading this mechanism problem on a final when I did TA at some point for OCHEM 1. Okay, so let's just say we have this structure, this double bond, this alkene, and I throw in some HBr, and you'll probably see this. It looks like ROAR. And all this means is some generic um, peroxide. So this could take the form of HOOH, as in H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. So I'm just going to write ROAR because that's, I think that's how it's usually written, and I want you guys to kind of just make sure you see the right notation here on Jochem. Okay, here's the transformation you obtain. Through no rearrangements whatsoever, you get this bromine in that, so versus the secondary carbon and this primary carbon in this double bond, you achieve the anti-product, you achieve, achieve the anti-addition of putting this bromine on the primary carbon. And I want to stress that this only works only, 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 only with HBr, okay? All right, so let's go through the mechanism. The first step, almost like an, an initiation-esque type step, looks like this. And it's kind of funny how this goes a little like full circle because we're gonna be, this is a radical mechanism, kind of one of the last mechanisms, mechanisms we do being very similar to one of the first ones we did with free radical halogenation. So the peroxide bond is very, very weak. And if you ever noticed on hydrogen peroxide bottles, they're usually brown because if any sunlight gets in there, this bond can cleave homolytically, right? Homolytic cleavage means this a bond breaks and each participant in the bond gets one electron. So I'm going to make sure we... So, we're going to make two of these radicals right here, right, because these guys both have two electrons, two electron pairs to start with. This is like the initiation step. Then what's going to happen is you take that radical and you're going to move on over to HBr and this radical oxygen, he's just going to pick off, he's going to abstract this hydrogen in HBr, which leaves HBr with a radical electron, which gives us a bromine radical. So to recap, you start off with your peroxide, split the bond homolytically because it's very weak. That gives you two of these RO radicals or whatever, whatever your R group is. Take that radical meet up with HBr, he's going to abstract this hydrogen, kind of steal him away from bromine. Bromine, this bond again, splits homolytically, so bromine gets an electron. Now we have a bromine radical. This is kind of like the initiation step. Okay, so now what's going to happen is if we take our alkene and we have our bromine radical down here, What's going to happen is that this double bond right here is going to bond with this bromine radical. So we're going to take a single-headed arrow from the double bond, and we're going to take another single-headed arrow from the bromine, and there's going to be some bonding there. And here's where we have to make a decision, right? So one of these electrons is used in bonding to bromine. Where does the other one go? Well, one of these carbons is going to bond to bromine, and the other one will be left as a radical, right? So do we want to give bromine to the secondary carbon, leaving the primary carbon to be a radical? Or do we want to give the primary carbon bromine 
and leave the secondary carbon as a radical? And we know the answer to that. We want to form this secondary radical because that's more stable, right? So the result of that electron flow looks like this. And you can see exactly how this reaction goes. Because of this step, we add the bromine in, the anti, in an anti-fashion, and all we have to do is kind of clean this uh, radical carbon up, and we're done with the mechanism. And here's how we do it. We run into another HBr, okay? This, I'm actually going to move the radical electron up here. This carbon is going to steal this hydrogen, right? And that means this bond will cleave homolytically and produce a bromine radical, okay? So what's kind of cool is we produce our organic product, the anti-product, the anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr product right here, but just like we did in free radical halogenation, we also produced the very radical that helped start the mechanism in the first place. Do you guys see that? Right? This mechanism started because this peroxide produced a bromine radical, and this bromine radical got things going. But by nature of actually doing the reaction, we produce a bromine radical just like we do in free radical halogenation. I'm stressing this because part of the question I graded on that final, you know, asked like, what is special about this reaction? And it's that we produce the very thing that helps get it going. Okay, so know this reaction. Just know if you see HBr and a peroxide, add in a Markovnikov anti-fashion Br. And just make sure if anyone gives you HCl or HI and peroxides, it's a no reaction, okay? All right, that wraps things up for the anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr. We have a few more reactions to go. Hang tough with me, guys. I know there's a lot going on.